Let's do some other stuff. Now it's time for the classroom. Advice on making gold via the auction house, professions, and more. Well, a little bird gold me. That's how I know of him. He did a couple of posts, uh, so he was talking about leveling professions from 600 to 700, the current max. And he provided a whole list of what you need in order to do that. So, Reckles, what do you think of, what do you think about this post? I think this is great um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, this okay. So first of all, this is great for uh, email that I got that I put in at the end that we can get to. But yep. um, essentially, we'll he's saying, that. "Hey, here's all the professions. Here's one thing that you can craft a bunch of, and like if you need to level inscription." From 600 to 700, make 10 Shadow Tomes. If you need to level Alchemy, make 100 Drainic Intellect Flasks, and that'll get you there. Like, this is just all the th 34 True Steel Reshapers for blacksmithing, and that should get you there. Usually these things are, like, not exactly this many, but pretty much. It, it pretty close. Should, yeah, pretty close. Um, so it's, it's just really good. One thing I'd recommend doing um, is if you want to make gold from this, uh, start collecting these materials really cheaply or farming up these materials and say, um, you know, we've got a new expansion coming out. Say, hey, selling uh, uh, leveling kits, anyone who wants to level from 600 to 7, you know, I'm selling an alchemy leveling kit. Uh, level from 600 to 700, 5,000 gold. And right. you you sell them 400 Starflower, 400 Talador Orchid, and 100 Crystal Vials. Or you make them get their own Crystal Vials because you don't want to carry that around. And you just have a guild bank filled with a couple thousand War Paints, a couple thousand Starflower, and you just keep a spreadsheet of how much you paid for everything and how much you're willing to sell it for. And you just load up on true iron and temporal crystals and beast hide and sumptuous fur and black rock ore and the grand era bloom and that looks like it. And you can make a ton of money. And so uh, if you have everything maxed out, if you don't have everything maxed out, then use this to level your own things. But this is a great reference for uh, what it takes to create leveling kits. Right? That's that's what I got from it. What did you get from from it there, Dead Greed? You know, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, great, this is a this is a good list of things to put on the arch tiles. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, honestly, I was sitting too. there looking at the list going, yeah, you know, 900 fur. <laughs> I was like, yeah, put this, start making my list here. Put, put it up. Mm-hmm. Let's see, star flower checked, orchid checked, crystal vial. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm, more of, I'm more of a kind of guy that likes to just throw stuff in the auction house and then, you know, go play Diablo or whatever. But yep. uh, you know that there's you can always have a lot of success by typing there in the old trade. Uh, want to want to sell this or that? Mm -hmm. So if you're into that, I'm not. I'd I'd rather not hang out all day and try to sell kits. Not saying right. that that's not profitable, but uh, you know that's cool it, too. It, it's more about time than what it is about you know hanging out to, or being hanging out in guild chat or in trade chat, whatever. Because well, you can just throw yeah, it up in the I mean, auction house and go do what you want. Yeah, it's not it's not time. It's like we we talked a couple hundred episodes ago about how to set up sniper scans using uh, Trade Skill Master, and you can just uh, go in there and search the auction house for um, you know underpriced underpriced items. Just have a shopping list set up and. Um, have a shopping list set up for all of your kit items 
that are half price and if anything half price shows up you just immediately buy it and slowly build up your stock of items and over time you get a get together and then you sell it for four times what it's worth so you end up making eight times profit so yeah well, well anytime there's gonna be like a new patch with uh with changes or or there's gonna be a new expansion come out i'm always i'm always on the lookout for things i can do to increase my gold and this is one of them this is this is a, this is a great idea Yeah, I would agree with that. That is a uh, be a lot of a lot of good ways to make some money here. And one of the other things that he was talking about too, when he was going through that list, was this was this uh, shuffle that he had uh, created for the Drenic uh, Philosopher's Stone. So did you do did uh, you do this at all? Their dead greed. No, I didn't. But I mean. It it's uh, I, I personally love math like this because I've I've done I have I've had formulas in the past and I've run formulas and I've done this basic same thing, on many other items. Uh, so I love stuff like this because you know, you you put it down. It's like a little math formula. You know, you put it down. You say this cost. Uh, you know, if you look in an auction house, this item cost seven gold. So you plug your seven gold into your formula, and then it comes out, and you're gonna make uh, twenty one point four gold. I love that stuff. It's awesome. That is good. What about you, though, Ruckles? This is the definition of arbitrage. If you can vendor something for more than you bought the materials for, um, that is, like, just do it all day long until you can't buy the materials for it mm -hmm. anymore. Um, that is fantastic. I love it. Um, I did a video a long time ago on how to do it with... There was enchanting shoulder enchants. I think it was blue, Ooh. blue shoulder inscriptions. I think it was. Yeah. You could do it. You could do it with that. They sold for forty nine. I think it was forty nine gold, and the materials cost nineteen gold. It was amazing, and you just did it all day long. And I did a video or a blog post or something about how amazing this was, and. I went super in depth, and then the day after I released my post, uh, Blizzard nerfed it to uh, four gold. Uh. And I was like, really, guys? Really? That's not cool. Um, we're, we're paying attention to you, Reckles. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Dead Greed. With the patch coming up, we're going to be able to fly. And I believe personally, I could be wrong. I may not be. But I could be wrong on this, but I personally believe with the with the patch of flying coming out, more people's going to be farming. There's going to be more ore in the auction house, which means the ore price will be going down, which means yep. people who have flips like this will make more money. I'm not saying that you have to personally fly around and get ore, but I'm going to say don't. ore in the auction house will go down because there's going to be more available. Yeah, but people are getting them from from their minds. So I really don't think that you're going to see. There's going to be an uptick, okay, because of because of flying. But I don't think it's going to be as great as what maybe some people would think it would be. Well, just something something that comes up comes to mind when you talk about the the mining. Um, the, the mine kind of has a bad PR because, you know, it's a garrison, and, and I know everybody's got a garrison, everybody's got a mine, but who goes down there? I mean, is there, are there still people farming that thing? I mean, it's got bad PR, and flying is awesome, and it's freedom, and you get to fly around and find ore. I think people will do that over going into their mine and getting ore. Now, here's a, here's a question for you. Um, since... Well, undoubtedly, I agree with you, we'll have more people like, oh, I have the freedom to fly now, so now I'm going to farm for some reason because I wasn't doing it before. Um, since people are going to start getting into the habit of mining again, um, what do you, do you think people will start farming Old World or more often too? 
Um, and if so, do you think so? The the reason I ask um, is I'm doing another video about how profitable smelting is right now, and that's in the works um, because if people start farming old world or again smelting might not be as profitable. Well, I I love old uh, flying and, and farming old or be, because. Uh, there's not a lot of people in the older zones. You know, no, there's not. If you're if if you go to to Tanan and fly around, and yeah, sure you're gonna get you know ore and you could get failed lights, which is awesome. Uh, but uh, if you go and you farm, say, out in Northrend in Jesus blank line. Salazar Basin, um, sorry. Okay. If you go, if you go fly okay. around at Salazar, you're going to get a ton of ore, and there's not going to, you're not going to have very much competition, and that ore sells pretty good, and you know you could get same thing with with different ores, you know, uh, the. You know, you're always going to get passed by a DK over that burning area in Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that I, I like to, maybe just maybe I, I like to go. Uh, sometimes you know it's. You know, you, you get kind of fed up with the competition of 45 players all at the same, trying to pick the same node. So I, I like to go to some of the old school stuff. And um, I don't know. I, I don't. I think people. I think people generally like to stay in the newer content. So I don't think that the smelting is going to take a big hit off of this line. Okay. No. No. And and really, uh, with people going into old older content. That really happens a lot there on Earth and Ring because of AIE and their little trade thing that they, uh, or a little uh, uh, skill leveling up that they do about twice for a year. Fair. For the Yeah, for the craft fair. So it really depends on what that realm needs. So if they're, if they're calling for say some gold some of the gold um, gold bars then they're gonna go, people are gonna go farm that if they're calling out for some of the um, some of the true steel then people are gonna go farm that so it really depends on what uh, what people need okay I think we're done with that part so I did get to tweet there a while ago, <laughs> almost almost a month ago, and at the fi at uh, the underscore Firestar said, "I think it is worth hoarding a coal fist Gronling mount, and or is it worth hoarding a coal fist Gronling mount in anticipation for a spike in the next X pack?" Would it be worth it or not? What do you think, Reckles? Would it be worth it or not? Um. For the Grunling Mount. Are you going to have a harder time farming it? Well, like, if you wanted to get another one? If, if, if you were... If you wanted to get another one later, um, how much would you, like, if you wanted to get another one in six months, how much would you be willing to pay for it? What will the demand be? No, no. No, no. No. How no. much would you be, like, how much would you be willing to pay for it in a year? Because right now, it's like we, we talked about this uh, with the um, like the Easter the Easter things where oh my gosh it's Easter I want the Easter mount or oh it's Valentine's Day I want the East, the Valentine's Day mount so it's exciting I so you rocket. could wait until you could wait until July to sell the Valentine's Day mount but then mm -hmm. it's not Valentine's Day so no one cares about it even though it's rarer so it's not like no one no one 
cares, so it's not going to sell for as much. So the the demand, like, eh, all right, it's rare, but no one cares. Like, if even though it's going to be a lot more rare, you may find someone who doesn't want to farm it and is willing to pay more. But does anyone care enough to pay? F for as much as they're not willing to farm it. Yes! Those were the words I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> he got there! Yay! <laughs> well, I think later, uh, next expansion pack, so on, etc., etc., et it'll be worth more, but it will be also harder to sell. Because the yeah. people that care about it, are good. they're going to go get it now, you know, and and the people later on, you know, that someone just goes to the auction house later and goes, what mount? What mounts are available? Oh, well, that mount's available. I could buy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it, I think it, it will be worth more, but I think it will be hard, a harder sell. Something that you'll have to repost a, a bunch of times to to get rid of. See, and by reposting a bunch of times, that means you'll eventually have to drop the price until it sells. Right. And. So it won't be worth as much. So what will the demand be? <laughs> so and and that's what the question is going to be every time you post it. I don't. I, I don't like. I don't know if you can get a good price for it, sell it. Like that's that's my advice. Like it, you can. It's not gonna triple in price. It's not gonna sell for three million gold. If you can get a good price for it, go for it, man. Get your gold, invest in something else, make some good flips, triple your gold, hit gold cap from the gold you made selling your groundling. Like, it's it's fine. Don't hoard this because um, worst thing that happens is you accident, like, horrible things can happen with accidentally mailing off the gold to a character and then, oh no, you don't log into that character and then your gold is lost forever. Like, that could happen. Or you make some gold. Don't worry about it. Well, my overall gold-making philosophy, uh, I don't uh, specifically farm for big-ticket items and then try to save them for later or whatever because, uh, you know, if you... If you just find your niche and you sell a ton of items that just make you money, you're gonna make money. You're gonna and you're, you'll make a lot more money than if you just try to get two things that's gonna sell for eighty thousand or something. To me, yeah. yeah. If you if you happen to run across one of these mounts, hold on to it, sell it later, make money. That's great. But I wouldn't put a ton of effort into trying to get these items because. You know, if you just happen to get one, that's awesome. But standing around and trying to farm this thing, how many hours is that going to take versus how much, you know, of how many bags you could have sold for way more money in the end? I think in the end you just make more money if you just if you just find the things you like, like making bags or uh, selling ore or making leveling kits or whatever. And you know, selling those for two, three thousand, or you know, x x amount of dollars, as opposed to trying to get that one item that's worth ninety thousand gold. Because really, mm -hmm. I, I think I you know. make more at, money in the long. The same, yes, at the same time, anyone who hasn't ever farmed up one big ticket item, I recommend they farm up one big ticket item once in their WoW career. Because just getting that thing to drop is like go out to Vashgir and farm up a seahorse, and just yeah, like, yeah. wait for an entire week, spend a week of your life out in Vashgir just farming up a seahorse. It's it's it'll be or or farm up the time lost proto drink and just spend your yes. life out in Northrend. Like, yes. do that just so you can get that epic experience of like, oh my god, it's here! Mm -hmm. Do that. Just once. Just once. And then never friggin' again. It's not worth it. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> just going out to, oh, what dungeon was that in Cataclysm? Go fight the dragon... 
I think is uh, one of the bosses. And hopefully that proto Drake would drop. That's not a good time. No. <laughs> That's not a not a good the time. Pain. I've never heard this much pain in your voice, Joe. <laughs> hey, not the, a um, good time. <laughs> the dungeon in, in the, the dungeon in, in uh Akadun and uh in Outlands, the uh the stupid bird mount, the the raven. Yeah. Seven hundred bulls. I still don't have it. Yikes. That's Yikes. That, that that is that is way too many. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I it, it's, I I've I have now given up. I don't even care about it anymore. And that's, that's when it drops. Just done. Just done. Yeah, no more it drops. No more pain. <laughs> no more pain. All right. Baron Revador, um, the the Baron Revador's mount in um, what was it Shalomans or I don't know. Anyway, that dungeon up there in the Western Plague Land. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I used to run that thing eight or ten times a day. I still don't Not have it. Happening. I, I I must be in the thousands on that. I don't even have a number. <laughs> Not happening. It's ridiculous. Uh uh. <laughs> Not happening. No. Then I'll go in there and just get it on the first time, and, and, and that'll that'll really make you mad. You know what the sad thing is? Is I have all the money. I could buy anything I want, except for I can't buy the things I want. <laughs> you have to go farm them yourself. Yeah, everything I want, I can't oh. buy. And, and everything I can buy, that I don't sucks. care about. <laughs> so that like, sucks. Double, double aged, double edged sword. Yes, it is. How about we get off this double edged sword? We but got. It's so painful. It's so painful. <laughs> okay, okay. What's the next email? Quit What's stabbing the next email? me, please. Um. <clears throat> okay, so first email. Okay. This comes from Shamwow Nordrasil, U.S. Dear your Wow Money podcast. Hello everyone, this question is to anyone and everyone on the Your Wow Money podcast. Please feel free to paraphrase my question if it will make it easier to read or fit it in the show. We obviously did that. Yes, we did. <laughs> As you may have heard during, uh, during the Wow Legion expansion announcement, garrisons will be left on Draenor. I assume the rewards will likely be nerfed again, but still available. My question is, with Garrison still a part of the game, albeit old content come Legion, will, would Garrisons be considered a good hub for bank alts, rather than keeping your bank alt in a major city at level 1? You could level them to 100, build a garrison, fit all the needs of a bank, or fit all the needs of a bank alt, such as trading posts with an auction house, and a bank as well as other buildings to slowly churn out extra gold and, su and supplies you can collect over time. This would definitely take time and gold to start, but after a while it would definitely prove to be a great investment given that your main tune is likely no longer on Draenor to collect such rewards. Please let me know what you think or please please let me know what you all think and I hope to hear about it on the show. Thanks for your time and keep up the great work. Regards, ShamWow, Nordrasil, US. Dead Greed. Yes, I want to talk about this. Go for it. I have a great theory here. Look, leveling character 100, unless you use your boost, it's going to take a long time. Leveling a garrison takes a ton of cash, unless you've already got it leveled up. On an alt, for right. example. Uh, and if you're playing that alt, you're probably going to bring your alt to the Legion, so to Dalaran, right? Because that's where we're going. Um, yep. yep. And as far as that goes, you could just take a level 1 character to Stormwind and have all those things for free and with no time investment in order to because uh, I, don't, I don't even have an auction house in my garrison because it's still 
a ton of gold, I'm not going to spend that much money on an auction house. There's a, you, you know, with that time investment, you know, leveling the guy to 100, leveling your garrison to level 3, getting all your uh, stuff, your garrison blueprints, and getting all your buildings leveled up to level 3 so you could actually use it. I don't think that it's going to be worth it, and I think they're going to nerf. They've already nerfed the holy living woo out of all the all of yeah, that stuff have. anyway, and yeah, you're not making a lot of gold right now. You make a little bit of gold now, not like it was. If they would have left it like they would have, like it was during the beginning of expansion, I was totally going to leave characters in Draenor just for that purpose. Now I don't care. They're gonna they're gonna go with me. Uh, I think if you just go to Stormwind or what Orgrimmar or whatever, uh, if you're a word, uh, if you just go there, you're gonna get all these things for free. You'll have an auction house. You'll have a, a bank. Or you'll have all the things you need. You don't. I don't think that. I don't think that that's really viable. Is I guess what I'm getting to. No. And and I would agree with all of it because it does take a lot of gold to get that auction house going. You know, and 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 the time it would take to level from one to 100, which actually wouldn't be any because you'd be able to purchase that 100 when uh, Legion comes out. Yeah, but that's 60 or how many ever dollars they're going to put on it. Right. And, uh, one thing I did want to talk about was the farm in Pandaria is still good for one reason, and, and that's the, the, uh, the spirits you can get. Mm -hmm. But I think there'll be little niche things like that for the garrison, but I don't think the whole system overall. I think they they just really they really killed it uh, this last patch. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the uh, the the farm because that's that's what I was I was gonna liken it to. Like no, no, I I still go out to the farm and I don't I don't just farm up spirits. Like I mostly farm up spirits, but I'll farm up kind of whatever I need. Um, and I mean it's it's um. I like this guy's idea. I was saying it from the beginning, like, this is a really good system for Warlords of Draenor, but wait, 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 what about after Warlords of Draenor? You're giving us all this stuff that is getting automatically crafted on a daily basis. If we keep crafting all this on a daily basis, we're going to get this huge influx of materials that no one's gonna have a need for anymore after Warlords of Draenor. What's gonna happen? Um, someone posted a tweet, I think it was Elvine, that was a screenshot of your your garrison has been destroyed. Um, that was sad. Uh, but, uh, the, the, uh, So I don't think they're gonna destroy garrisons. No. Oh. No, that I don't think that they're gonna destroy garrisons. I think that they're just gonna be part of a storyline thing. Um, okay, good. But um, I like I like this idea. I mean, it's yeah, it it makes a lot more sense to keep a level one tune in Stormwind. Uh, but you know, for bank alts that. Or trading, you know, uh, auction house alts that you really don't have a need to interact with anyone. Um, cool. Like, just... Just sell stuff on the auction house. Go between your mailbox and your auction house thing and and do that all day long. And just, just sell things and make gold and craft a few items and sell them on the auction house and make a little extra gold and like that'll get you ahead it'll still make you a couple like do your missions your missions will still make you flat gold every day well something about that uh, at gamescom somebody asked uh, or maybe one of the interviews but I, either way uh, somebody asked one of the developers is the garrison coming with this to legion and he was like no, the garrison is not coming to Legion. It's going to stay on Tranor, and you can go back if you want to. It won't really help you out all that much. 
I kind of think they're gonna just nerf all that junk and it, they're just gonna be done with it because they caught so much bad bad flack with the garrison. I think they just they just want to get away from that and get into yeah. new content and, 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 they will. and new uh, better PR things. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like it. I was never mad at garrison. I I'm fine with garrisons. I've always been on the garrison bandwagon, and I think it's a shame that everyone didn't like it. But that's fine. Garrisons, yeah, I, garrisons were okay, but they they just overdid it. In, in my mind, like that, there just there was just way too much stuff in the garrisons. They could have simplified it and been fine. But anyway, yeah, I, I do want yeah. I do want to make one point before we, before we move on. Keep in mind that these bank alts, you now have a mount to go from where, wherever your mailbox is to the bank or the auction house. So you don't have to run. You can now mount up in your chauffeured, uh, your chauffeured bike and just go from one place to the other. So to me, if you want, if you already have the auction house up in the garrisons, and you already have that stuff going, that's fine. But keep in mind, you're going to be stuck in those garrisons there for a while, <laughs> okay? Unless you go back and forth, and which would just be a headache. But I think just for me, I'm sticking to my level nine uh, mage. And I'm going to keep them in Stormwind. I'm going to keep my level 6 mage, and I'm going to keep him, keep him in Olgamar. Yeah. So, it just depends what you want to do. I think we're I'm going to keep my level, level 9 paladin in Stormwind, probably. Yep. Oh, oh, another thing to be aware of, if you have... Uh, Bengal over level 10, everyone knows who you are. Um, yep. So, is that if, if you care? <laughs> some people care, some people don't. To each his or her own. <laughs> I care a little bit, but then I put their names in videos, so. I know how Whoops. Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's not good. All right, Reckles, I'm going to let you read this one. Okay. Hey, Reckles, my name is Stevie, and I was wondering if I could get your advice on reaching gold cap. I've been playing WoW on and off for about a year now uh, with a level 88 troll hunter. The horde is awful, and no, I hate the no, horde. No, I wish no, I was come a lion. On. Oh, oh, he didn't, he didn't say that. All right. Um... I love playing the game, but I never really have time to gather gold because of my job. I've been trying to save up gold to get WoW tokens so I don't have to worry about monthly subscriptions. Yet, it seems like each time I try a new gold farming video on YouTube, I go around in circles for hours with no luck, or I spend more gold on items that should help me to find more gold, but just don't work out great. I noticed in one of your recent videos you talked about different garrison features from Warlords of Draenor. Asides from the new content, storylines, etc., is WAD worth buying to use garrisons for gold farming? Is there a way for players to farm gold without WAD perks that is accessible and easy to do? Let me know what you think, and if you have any advice for new gold farmers. All the best, Stevie. Um, now, I I got this question on YouTube, and I just want to say, like, I've, I've got... I had this question back in Cata. And I had um, Mr. Pandaria, and um, but I've I've never had it um, before the new expansion dropped about the current expansion. <laughs> so yeah. this is fantastic. I like I like that he's a little bit late on asking this question. Um. I have, I have my thoughts on this, but what do you guys think? Dead Green, you go first. Well, 
and I've said this before, and I'll uh, I'll go over it. But I love Ember Silk. Jesus, Ember Silk is so awesome. You can make Ember Silk bags. They they fly off the shelf. It, they're really really great. Ember Silk super easy to farm. Uh, there's many places you can look on the internet. Type in uh, Google best place to farm Ember Silk, and go there. Uh, you can. When you're doing that, uh, you can get one of those potions of treasure finding, and uh, then you'll get little boxes, and you'll get more ember silk, and you'll get other items that you can sell in the auction house. Uh, and uh, you can make, like I said, you can make bags. Uh, you can just sell just the straight up ember silk. It sells really good at a great price. Uh, love it. Uh, other than that, there's many other things that you can do. Uh, lots of things you can farm. You can farm. Uh, if, if, if you just want to uh, go to the auction house, then you have to do a lot more studying. You have to do, you have to know kind of what things normally sell for, so that you can look for things that are cheaper, and then you can flip them. Yeah, yeah. That's... Other, other than that, as far as uh, as far as uh, tips for a, a guy just starting out, trying to get to uh, gold cap or trying to make gold I don't I wouldn't suggest trying to get to gold cap just try to have fun you know just have fun mm -hmm. take I don't know what professions you got so look at your professions and look at the things that sell for your professions and figure out how you can farm those things or how you can buy them in the auction house to make more money flipping ie so you're a hunter so maybe you skin I'm thinking so really as far as what the professions go, skinning and probably leatherworking. So we're looking at transmogs by professions, which is an idea, and doing some uh, skinning, not just to get your your level up, but um, maybe to make some gold off to the side. Keep in mind, gold making is a marathon and not a sprint. That's the way it is for a lot of people. So. Yes. And another thing, too, is once you get to those garrisons, really start looking on, on getting the uh, the buffs for the garrisons, the gold-making buffs for the garrisons, the, the uh, treasure hunters, and get those up there for when the Blagantron quest drops. That could be, what, about a thousand gold at least? Quite possibly. So, really, there's a lot of different ways to make gold. It's it's just that you got to find the ways that suit you best. So, that's kind of what I got. A little short and sweet. How about you, Reckles? What's your response? Well... I, he, he said aside from the content and the storylines, but uh, on a more general topic, for anyone else who hasn't per is, is wondering if they should purchase Legion or hasn't purchased Warlords yet, like, you can, you can spend hundreds and hundreds of mm -hmm. hours just trying to accomplish all of the fishing quests. And, and fishing achievements. Like, like the game is absolutely huge. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And so, I, I, I love someone who's like, do I have to buy the new expansion? No, you don't have to buy the new expansion to have fun. Like, you can play the game however you want to right. play the game. If you... It's it's just more fun to get on the hype wagon and, like, oh, Warlords of Draenor was the best expansion ever, or, oh, Warlords of Draenor ruined, wow, Legion's gonna be amazing, Legion's over hype, you know, whatever, just pick a side and go for it. Um, <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. true. And... So that's that's what I recommend. Um, but uh, for what Dead Green was talking about, like you can, he's he's saying you can make twenty thousand gold with Ember Silk bags. Yep. Yeah, you can. Yep. I knew I knew a guy who was making no joke 
5,000 gold a week mining copper ore. That's 20, that's, he was, it was before the, the token, but he was paying for his WoW subscription, essentially, just mining copper ore, and I think he was a level 30? He didn't, he didn't know how to make gold, he just found a good spot to farm copper ore, and he was like, this is fun, I'm gonna sit here and farm copper ore, and I'm gonna put it on the auction house, because I think this is fun. Oh look, I made some gold. He was just having a good time. Like, right. if you have mining, find something, make copper ore, and turn it into bars, and oh look, I made some bronze, or some tin, or some whatever, like just pick something and do it. And do it a lot. If you don't have time to, okay, diversify, find out how to flip stuff. We talked about um, making kits. That's pretty quick. You can do it in your spare time whenever you're at the auction house. Just find a good deal, buy it, flip it whenever it's expensive. Um, and that's what I recommend. Find cheap stuff, buy it, sell it when, when it's expensive. Eventually you'll have gold. One thing I do think that we should talk about, because he did say that, um, you know, he's only level 88. Uh, and that's whatever. If you, that's what you're, that's where you're at. That's where you're at. You don't have to be level 100. You can still have fun at the game at level 88. But he's saying, uh, you know, how how do you get started? He's saying how, you know, what's what's a good, what's the best thing to tell somebody that's just getting started in the gold making game? And let me tell you, it, it's not. I can tell you all day long what to get, what to buy, or or this or that. The best thing I'm going to ever tell you is add-ons, add-ons, add-ons. And there is, uh, if you There's don't have add-ons, you're seriously behind in the gold-making game. And the add-ons that I love, uh, you know, there's Trade Skill Master, there's um, Auctionator, uh, Auctionator, got Auctioneer. A, Altaholic, if you don't yeah, have Altaholic, Altaholic and you're playing on more than one character, you're doing it wrong, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. There, and, you know, maybe as a newer player, maybe this guy doesn't realize how important add-ons are. So if you guys want to talk about uh, the importance of add-ons and, and, you know, kind of yeah. what y'all kind of use to make gold, I think that would help him more than just saying, hey, farm copper or this or that. Because, you know, if you farm copper and you don't know what price to put it at, you know, uh, you know, utilize, utilizing the undermine journal or, or whatever, uh, if you don't know what price, you're, you're not going to make gold. So maybe we should talk about that for a minute. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Trade Skill Master is one of the most essential and beautiful add-ons out there. It lets you post things at um, very specific global prices. Um, yeah. The average price of um, that things are selling at. Uh, so, if someone posts. Uh, let's go with fell iron or I'm on an ore kick today. Woo. Um, uh, and you, or let's go with transmog, because transmog. If someone posts a green item, a uh, green piece of gear on the auction house and you see it and they put it up for five gold, uh, you hover over it and you see that it's actually selling for 398 gold across all servers, you know that, oh hey, that's worth buying. Um, so you should probably buy it and either put it up for 300 gold yourself or maybe you just want to make some money really quick and so you put it up for 150 gold because you don't care. Um, so that's how you can use uh, Trade Skill Master really quickly. Um, there's a lot more to Trade Skill Master. Yeah, the, and, and there really is. <laughs> there's a lot going to Trade, trade Skill Master. And, and really kind of the sites too, like uh, the UndermineJournal.com. That's a good resource to, to go see what's selling and what's not selling in accordance to your realm, your profession. You know, whatever. But Alessandra also put in a good uh, a good thing here in the chat room. She said that he can go around collecting the treasures once 6.2.2 drops. Sell them and collect the gold should be easy then. And that's a pretty good idea. Just saying. <laughs> one, one 
one thing I, I, I was going to talk about uh, when the patch comes out uh, for for me personally what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell rides on my flying mount because people aren't going to be able to fly and I'm going to be able to fly and I'm going to sell rides on my flying mount hey do you want to fly over to this spot pay yes. me X amount of gold and jump on bro because I'll take you there I'll give you an X that's true flight paths by dead green <laughs> nice <laughs> That's it. I, I, and I, I, I work a sometimes very boring job, and I sit at work and I think about dumb stuff like that. Like you know, <laughs> hey, lights coming out. I have the, yep, the achievement. Yep. A lot of people are up in arms about it. They don't want to get their achievement. Or here's a better idea. Ding, ding, ding. People don't want to get those treasures, and maybe the treasures are the only thing holding them back from mm-hmm. them personally flying. So you could fly around with an add-on. Um, like uh, handy notes and fly people to different uh, treasures and you know sell that say hey I'll get you 50 treasures today Especially give me 5,000 gold or whatever and then you fly them from point point A to point B on your map and say hey there's a treasure to your left there's a treasure to your right get off get back on the mount let's go I mean yeah that's gonna take time uh, but there's gonna be a lot of people that's not gonna be flying here in Especially the next Especially in the grand just saying yeah, because some, they, yeah, some exactly. of those treasures were just hard are just hard to get to, which by the way you got you have to take a glider and land it just right on that spot. Uh uh-uh. uh, that don't happen. No, I was lucky to get some of the trees over there. But that's that's a really good idea of selling Nagrand Nagrand uh, treasure routes. Yep, specifically Nagrand treasure routes. I really like that idea. Mm-hmm. Could land on some buildings there and not have a flare with you. That would be good. All right, people. It's time to end the podcast now. So, uh, how can the players get a hold of you? (laughs) All right, real quick. I know somebody opened their mouth. No, it's okay. Okay. Well, I will say, I will say this before we start the music up, just kind of get off the topic here. Tinyurl.com forward slash Alpha Geek Topics. If you guys want us to do something that is really off the cuff, go there and uh, put in what you think we should do. Because Specifically that, mentioning be- the vanquish. <laughs> yeah. Aston Martin Vanquish, or or you could or you could do something actually cool and, and talk about the DB9. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let me take that down a bit. All right, Dead Greed, how can we get a hold of you? You can find Dead Greed on Twitter at Dead Greed eighteen twelve or on Twitch at. Twitch TV slash DayGreed1812 or on the Airy Peak server or on Diablo a lot. Or on Diablo a lot. <laughs> Alright, Reckles. Alright, you can find the show live at 3 p.m. on Channel 2 at tunein.alphageekradio.com and on the TuneIn app. You can also find us live on yourwildmoney.com slash live at 2 30 p.m. on Saturdays. 2 30 <laughs> zero, whatever. <laughs> One of those times. And yeah. if you don't want to listen live, you can hear us on Stitcher, on iTunes, and a plethora of other podcast apps. If you're on the site, you can use the speak pipe at the bottom of the page. And you can. And, I'll oh, ta- I'll, you I'll, you, I'll get you go ahead, sir. Go I'll ahead. take it. You can find us on Twitter at Your Wow Money, Facebook at Your Wow Money Cast, and on LinkedIn.com slash in slash Your Wow Money. And you can find me at YouTube.com forward slash WTV Gold Wow, and on Twitter at Ryan A. Eccles, that's E C K L E S. You can find Lady Hava on twitch.tv forward slash Lady Hava. 
at Lady Hava on Twitter, or you can email her, Lady Hava at yourwowmoney.com. You can find me on youtube.com forward slash Joe Brums, at Joe Brums on Twitter, and Joe at yourwowmoney.com. And if you like what you hear, go to patreon.com forward slash bbnet. So that way you can support us. Because money is good. Give us money. <laughs> Give us money. And seriously, go check out that tiny URL. Dot com forward slash alpha geek upgrades. Because that will be some good stuff. Good funny stuff. And don't forget, get you out out. <laughs> Indeed. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. This podcast recorded before a live internet audience. To learn how to listen and watch live, visit tunein.alphageekradio.com.